Hello and welcome back to another episode of GMAT Friday. This is Abhishek Day, your Quant Mentor from IMS International. I am here with again a Quant question. The question is based on a data sufficiency problem type. There is the question in front of you. As always, pause the video, give it a try and then resume to see the solution. So this is a data sufficiency question. Where do we find this question? This question is seen in the data insight section. What do we have to do in this question? So in this question, in this problem type, the question is given followed by two different statements. And we have to analyze which of the statement is sufficient enough to answer the question. We don't have to find the answer. Just need to say which of the given statements, if true, is sufficient enough to answer the question. These are the standard five options that you will see in all the questions of this type. Which state statement one alone is sufficient but not statement two, statement two alone is sufficient but not statement one. Both together are sufficient but neither alone. Each alone is sufficient and statement one and two together are not sufficient. You'll see these five options in all the data sufficiency question of this type. Clear? Now let's straight away go to the question. So it says if six times x y is equal to x square y plus nine y, what is the value of x y? So we don't need to find the value of x y. We have to say which of these two sufficient, these two statements are sufficient to answer the question. So let's start. Six times x y is equal to x square y plus 9y. So if I take everything to one side, I can get x square y minus 6xy plus 9y is equal to 0. I can see that y is associated with every term. So I can take y in common and I'll be left with x square minus 6x plus 9. Sorry, plus 9. Clear? I can further factorize this unit and write as x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9 is equal to 0. So I am splitting the middle term to factorize it further. That means y times x minus 3 raised to the power 2 is equal to 0. Now product of two term is equal to 0. That means either one of the term is 0 or both of the terms are 0. So that means either y is equal to 0 or x minus 3 is equal to 0. That is x is equal to 3 or both of them are true. Correct. Now let's uh, use each of the statements and see whether we can find a solution or not. So using statement 1, so statement 1 says y minus x is equal to 3, clear? Now let's say I am just using y is equal to 0. So if y is equal to 0, what is x? x is y minus 3, that is 0 minus 3, that is minus 3. Now, y is 0, x is minus 3. What is x, y? 0. Clear. Now, if I take x is equal to 3, if x is equal to 3, what is y? y is equal to 3 plus x, that means 3 plus 3, that is 6. Now, what is x, y? x, y is equal to 3 times 6, that is 18. Clear. Now, using statement 1, I am getting two different values of x, y. But the statement is said to be sufficient if I get a unique value. Since I am getting two different values of x, y, that means statement 1 alone is not sufficient to answer the question. Okay. Now, let's jump to statement 2. <coughs> now, statement 2 says that x raised to the power 3 is less than 0. That means x raised to the power 3 is negative. Now since x raised to the power 3 is negative, x has to be negative. That means x cannot be 3 anymore. Clear? That means the only option I am left with is y is equal to 0. Now if y is equal to 0 and x is a number that is less than 0, 
And what is x y? What can we say about x y? x y has to be zero because the product of two number is zero if at least one of them is zero. And since y is zero, x y has to be zero. Now using statement two, I am just getting one value of x y that is zero. That means statement two is alone sufficient to answer this question, but not statement one. Now since you have watched the entire video. you are going to comment down the correct choice out of the five given options i hope you like this video if that's true don't forget to hit the like button share it with your friends and subscribe our channel for more such insights